Hello, my loves, and welcome back. So the lighting in here is horrific. Hopefully I can fix it in editing. We are starting solid foods with CJ, yay! He's sitting here in his high chair. It's still a little teeny bit too big for him. Can you say hi? Easy hi. And I figured I would have you guys come along because duh, and plus I have so many questions. New mom life, I know nothing. I tried to do research. There's so much conflicting stuff online. Yesterday I started to have a breakdown after his doctor's appointment because I didn't know, like I've read so much stuff. The doctors suggest stuff. People conflict that. They're like, don't listen to the doctor. The doctor's like, don't listen to this person. You have to choose. It is so mind blowing. So I had to reach out to my sister. Well, I reached out to my sister just asking her what she was doing with her baby. And she gave me like this pep talk that she got from her friend. So. I'm gonna go into all of that, talk about how CJ's doing with solids and sleeping sleeping overnight, does that make sense? You know what I mean, like sleep training and if I'm doing it, if I'm not doing it, how I feel about it and all that stuff. So if you're interested, keep watching, yay! We need to put this so we can see you. You're the star of the show. Yes, you are. You have cereal all over your face. Hey friends, I think the lighting is a little bit better. You can see CJ more in my horrifically, horrifically messy kitchen behind me. It's new mom life and this is how it is. Yesterday was CJ's six month doctor visit. The doctor told me at his four months that you could start solids anywhere between four and six, depending on the baby, how they hold their head up, if they have control over their head, their neck strength, if they can sit up well, how they're sleeping, that kind of stuff. He said, but we'll talk about it again at six months. So I was planning to wait until he was six months old, go to the appointment, get the whole rundown, and then we would go from there. However, my little guy is not much of a sleeper. Yeah, you're laughing about it. My baby has FOMO. He doesn't like to nap. He doesn't like to sleep at night. So one of my besties, Kat, and her bestie has four children. So she was like, honey, your baby's hungry. That's why he's not sleeping. I mean, CJ was a skinny little thing. But she said, why don't you try cereal? So they talked me through how to do it. I felt really good about it. I gave him cereal. So he was probably a little over five months at that point. He loved it. I will put in a video if I can find it, but he would scream because literally I couldn't get the spoon into his mouth fast enough. I feel like because with the bottle or with the breast, he does both. He breastfeeds and he has formula. I just don't make enough milk. There's plenty of stories back on my channel about that. I'm not gonna get into it. If you're new here, you can go back and watch. He couldn't understand that with the bottle or the breast, it's just continual and he controls the flow. He could stop, he could start, he could do whatever he wants. But with being spoon fed, he has to wait for me to take, get another spoonful and he didn't know. So he would scream bloody murder between bites. So we started with cereal, he loved it. Did that for a little over a week, he does. If I give him cereal before bed, he does sleep better. He does not sleep through the night yet. I believe that's my fault, we're gonna get there. What the doctor said about sleeping and sleep training and how I'm handling it, not well. Spoiler alert. A couple weeks in, he was handling that like a champ, no problems with his stomach. He was sleeping really well, he liked it. So I decided I wanted to try avocado. I heard avocado, sweet potato is the way to go. So we tried avocado, I mashed it up. He loved it so much. I was kind of nervous because it was stringy and still a little bit chunky. I thought all along doing all my research before he was old enough to eat, I thought I wanted to do baby lead weaning and I still might try it, but I'm so scared that he's going to choke. I'm the most different mother than I ever thought I was going to be. I thought I'd be like the drill sergeant. I thought Adam would be the softy. I thought that I would want to like rush through this kind of stuff, baby lead weaning, you know, you're a big boy, you could eat with your hands. And I know that there are different reasons for doing that that are good for them, but I am such a softy. I'm like, you're in my room until you're at least able to drive, maybe 25. We did the avocado, I mixed it with some formula to thin it out. About four or five days later, I wanted to try something else. So I bought a sweet potato, did the sweet potato. He did not like it as much. I did mix it with formula to thin it out. He took a lot of it. I don't know if it was all that fiber. I don't know if I just introduced foods too fast. I don't know, cause I'm so new at this, but poor baby got so constipated. 
he would turn red, he was straining, he was pushing, and sorry if this is TMI, but mom life is filled with TMI. It's not even TMI anymore. He's peed on my face, on his own face, like it's just mom life, right? So if you're here, I'm sure you're watching it because mom life, or because obviously you can handle it. Call my sister, I'm like, what do I do? This poor baby, he is in so much pain. And to me, that's the worst feeling in the whole entire world. Like my poor baby, every time he would turn red and push, I would cry. He wouldn't cry. He would, you could tell he was straining and he was pushing and it was a little painful for him. But I would cry because I'm like, I did this to him. I just know that feeling and it sucks. Like, I guess our genetics just lean more towards that. My sister's like, you could try prune juice. So I did some research and prunes and pears have something in them. It's a different kind of fiber that pushes things through you. So we started with prune juice, just like a half an ounce in his bottle. He did not like it straight, he gagged. So I put some in the cereal because the constipation lasted over a few days and it just kept getting worse. So I decided that I was gonna stop cereal, solids, everything, till he got his poor little stomach under control. Cause my biggest fear, different mother than I thought I'd be again, do you wanna keep trying to eat? Was that he would get impacted and it would be like a medical emergency. I swear I'm not filming and ignoring my baby. He didn't want anymore, so we're going slow. Stop solids, I gave him prune juice, and then I read you could do an ounce for every month that they've been alive. So technically I could have given him five ounces, but then my doctor told me yesterday only one ounce. So I don't know, but I had done way more than that. Or maybe it was two ounces mixed with six ounces of formula. And he took that and it helped a little bit, but not too much. So the next day I gave him a little bit more. I think the final day I gave him maybe three or four ounces of prune juice mixed with formula. Are we done? Are we gonna need to take a little break? Yeah, do you wanna come out? So I put a little more prune juice in his bottle and I guess I gave him a little too much. By the third day, he was playing in his little jumper and he had a blowout to the point where it was down to his socks. I had to cut off his onesie because there was no way I was pulling that poop over his face. Cut it off in the bathtub, cleaned him up, so I was relieved. I know that's crazy. Like I would take a blowout diaper all day, every day over poor baby being that constipated. So we fixed that over the next couple of days. I introduced cereal again, very slowly. It took a couple of days, only a little bit at night before bed to try to help him sleep. The day before his six month doctor appointment, I gave him avocado and so far so good. Before I get into what the doctor said, I just wanted to show you guys really quick. You know, I love to get dressed up for the doctor. It's like the only thing I have to do as a new mom during COVID. So these are some of the outfits that I wore not only to the doctor, but over the next couple of days, I've been living for my Teddy Blake bag that I showed you guys in a couple of videos. This bag has held up so well. It is so so beautiful. It's an easy crossbody, but there are so many Teddy Blake bags and they're having their end of year winter sale right now. And you can get their beautiful designer, genuine leather bags for up to 75% off. Do not walk run to the Teddy Blake website. I have all of the information for them listed below in the description box. Their bags are beautiful. They have some really amazing designer dupes. Can't say enough good things about Teddy Blake's bags. The craftsmanship, the way that it holds up, it is completely real. They have every different color, every different size, depending on your personal needs. So I would love to know if you get this bag, what you think of it. Tag me on Instagram, row underscore Clawson. Literally run, do not walk. I'm about to get another one myself. Love you guys, now back to the video. According to the doctor, yesterday, he told me to start with cereals, which I already did. Baby cereals are iron fortified. Now is around the time where his iron stores dip because what he got from me during pregnancy run itself out, you know what I mean? I don't know how to say that, but they were dipped back down. So start with the cereals. As long as he can handle them well, which he can, because I had already started them, and he was fine. The doctor was totally fine with me that I had already started a couple things. He said, then move into vegetables. Introduce only one at a time. Wait three or four days to make sure the baby does not have an allergic reaction, and then you can introduce another one. So it goes cereals, vegetables, then you could do fruit, then you could do meats. After all of that, then you could start introducing allergens. As far as allergens, he said, start with egg, 
scramble up some egg. He said, because if a baby has an egg allergy, most likely they'll have a peanut allergy. So you wanna start with the egg. Scramble it up, give him just a very little bit, see how he handles it, watch him for three or four days, make sure he doesn't break out in hives or has any kind of allergic symptoms. Then you wait, as long as that's okay, then you can introduce nuts. Take either the powdered peanut butter puffs that you get for babies at the store, mush them up, mix them with a little bit of breast milk or formula and give them to baby that way. But you don't give it to baby to ingest, you just put a little bit on his lip. You could do that or you could do PB2, the powdered peanut butter. You get it like at Costco or you see it all over. Mix that with formula. I think what I would do personally, I try to go as close to nature as possible. Just me, just what I like to do. No shame, no judgment. Do what you like to do. Maybe I'll change my mind because I, I've been shocking myself left and right with the way that I parent and what my fears have been and my anxieties. But as far as I think what I want to do and what I've seen other people in my research do is take just a little bit of some sort of organic nut butter or whatever nut butter I have in the house at the time. Right now we have the almond butter from Costco. Thin it out with some formula or breast milk. You could even do water. Oh, he told me about water, we'll get there. Just put a little bit on their lip. You wait and watch and see if that spot gets red, raised, swollen, he breaks out in hives, anything like that. If it does, I have to call. They were would have already tested him from the eggs, but let's say he doesn't have a reaction from eggs, but he will have a reaction from nuts, then that's what you do. So of course, paranoid first time mom. The first thing I asked him was, if he does have some sort of reaction, just when I put it on his lip, will that be a medical emergency? Like, do I need to rush him into the hospital? I don't know much about nut allergies. We don't have any in my family that I know of. Hopefully CJ's fine. I think he is and I'll get to that in a minute. And he said, typically just putting it on the skin isn't gonna cause much of a reaction. It really needs to be ingested. So you should be okay. But of course, if he starts breathing funny or having some sort of weird anaphylactic type of reaction, if his tongue starts to swell, of course, bring him immediately to the emergency room. Like fine common sense. Okay, sorry, we had to break for some boob. That's what he said about peanuts. And then at that point, he'll have been introduced to everything. He said, just have so much fun with it. He said, this is when the fun starts. Oh, and it's three meals a day and he can have up to eight ounces of water a day. He's like, you know, if he's like sweaty and he looks dehydrated, then you could do a little bit more, but he's like, really just stick to eight ounces a day. And I haven't given him any water yet. That's where we were with food, breast milk or formula around that. He gave me the amount of ounces that it's supposed to be a day, like 24 to 30 something, I think it was. I don't know how many ounces CJ takes a day because it's between bottles and breast milk. I feed on demand. I don't feed on a schedule. So that brings me to sleeping. This is just what the doctor's telling me versus my research. I'm no expert. Every baby is different, but I would love to know what worked for you because I, I'm clueless and I'm still trying to learn. Yesterday I was at breakdown mode because first time mom has no idea. I don't have my mom. And then my older sister who has kids, her oldest is 15, her youngest is nine. So she's like, I'll tell you what I did. But things change so rapidly with babies and pediatricians. This is what worked for me. So I love hearing from other moms. When I kind of let the cat out of the bag that the baby wasn't sleeping, he's like, he's not sleeping for you through the night. I said, no. He said, well, what do you do for him when he wakes up? I said, I said, I, I breastfeed him. He was like, okay. He said, by six months, your baby should be sleeping through the night. He shouldn't have to eat. You know, if he eats enough during the day, which he should, then you shouldn't have any problem with him sleeping at night. You really need to get that under control now by six months, he said, because the further along you get, the harder it's going to be. He said, and you don't want a one, two, three-year-old coming into your bed. As long as he's fine, you put him in the crib. This is according to the doctor. This is not according to me. I don't know how I feel about this. Just putting that out there first is a disclaimer. He said, put him in his crib. If you hear him cry, you go in there. Don't pick him up. Check his diaper. Check that he's safe. Let him know that you're there. Typical sleep training. He'll fall back asleep. It'll happen a lot in the beginning. And then within the first week or so, he should be able to sleep through the night. Adam was like all about this. He's like, it's time. And I was like, you guys, like every excuse that I could possibly imagine. I'm like, I'm not ready. I was like, he's way too far across the house from us. Across the house. We live in a three bedroom, tiny little condo. His room is right down the hall from us. We have a baby monitor. Like that's not it at all. But I'm like, I think he needs us. He's going to wake up in the middle of the night scared. 
And he's like, why don't we give it a try? So last night, Adam was in the shower. I brought the baby into our bedroom and I was breastfeeding him. He was like, so, you know, we are going to have to eventually put the baby in his crib. And I was like, I know, but do you want to go put him in there now? And he's like, well, no, you already started the process in here. Like we're going to have to, you know, a routine that triggers, triggers is the wrong word, but a routine that I guess triggers is the right word. Just a routine that he knows that it's bedtime and he's going to bed in his crib and he's safe and this and that. I know in my brain, logically, that Adam's right. And I know we all need sleep. Like all night long, the baby had a fussy night last night. Every time he woke up, I got up to get him and I was breastfeeding him. Actually, I did it the first like half of the night. And I don't honestly know what time it was because I take off my watch and I charge it at night. So I don't know the times, but for the first maybe three or four times, yes, he wakes up a lot, that he woke up, I did not breastfeed him. I just, I did the same thing. I let him know I was there. He fell back asleep. I know he could do it because when he was like six weeks old, he was doing this, but then he got hungry and Adam was still working at that point. So I would pick him up out of his bassinet and I would tiptoe out of the room as fast as I could, shut the door because Adam had to get up and work. But now that Adam's not working, I just stay in there. And so he's like, we need sleep. I get it. I have not slept in six months. I understand. I look like this for a reason. I feel tired. I look tired. I get it. Logically, my heart is broken. I was making every excuse. But as I was up feeding him last night, I'm like, I know I'm not supposed to be doing this. But my mama heart, what do I do, you guys? I have no idea. I think the bottom line is I know once he's in his crib, he's sleeping 100% through the night, I need sleep. So I'm not going to wake up to pump and I know I'm going to lose my milk because I don't have a ton of milk to begin with. That's why I was okay with him breastfeeding all night long or as often as he wanted all night long because I want to keep my milk. I want to breastfeed him as long as I can to a year. Oh, by the way, they said it could take 10 to 15 tries for a baby to like food that you're introducing. So don't give up. Like let's say you're introducing asparagus or broccoli or something like that and baby hates it and they spit it or they gab. Let it go and then introduce it again later. You could also mix in a little bit of something that they do like, something that they know the taste of to get them used to that, but it could take 10 to 15 tries. That is a lot of attempts. So don't get down on yourself. It also said a couple teaspoons and that's fine. And to follow the baby's cues, don't force feed the baby. The baby does not need to finish all of what you made. I love you guys so much and we'll see you in the next one.